By the end of this webcast, we'll be able to identify the organic molecules that are able to undergo substitution reaction, and we'll be able to understand whether they go by the SN1 or the SN2 pathway. A few pages forward in your notes, and you'll find this summary, structure reactivity, and the haloalkane. In order to identify substrates that are capable of undergoing substitution by the SN1 or SN2 pathway, first we need to find an sp3 carbon atom, and that carbon atom must be directly bonded to a leaving group that right now we'll call X. By the end of this webcast, we'll know a lot more about what X can be, but it's likely to be a haloalkane. On this slide, what we want to do is summarize whether the reaction for these various substrates, from methyl to tertiary haloalkanes, are likely to go by the SN1 or the SN2 pathway. The main determinant of that happens to be the degree of substitution. In an upcoming webcast, we'll see that as the degree of substitution increases, so does carbocation stability. This is an electronic factor that favors the SN1 reaction. We know that the SN1 pathway requires an intermediate that's a carbocation, so it makes sense that as the carbocation stability increases, so does the tendency toward an SN1 reaction. Let's see what that looks like on a reaction coordinate diagram. Let's consider the reaction where we have a haloalkane in the presence of a nucleophile, the leaving group is lost, and the substitution at that sp3 center takes place. Now let's consider the reaction coordinate diagram. We're plotting energy against progress for a series of substrates. Let's consider haloalkanes from methyl to primary, secondary, and tertiary. They will go through an intermediate by the SN1 pathway that's a carbocation intermediate. And here's where the key comes in. The stability of that intermediate depends on the degree of substitution. The lowest of these is the tertiary carbocation. The highest is the methyl. The methyl is going to be an intermediate that's almost unobtainable because its energy is so high. And so the pathway for the tertiary is relatively easy compared to the pathway to get to that very high energy methyl intermediate. Are methyl halides incapable of undergoing substitution reactions? Well, they don't go by the SN1 pathway, but they do go by the SN2 pathway, which is governed by steric factors, accessibility to the site of the reaction. In particular, how accessible is the empty sigma star orbital associated with the carbon X bond? It's very accessible for the small hydrogens, as well as the primary haloalkanes, but that sigma star orbital is not very accessible when you have three groups that are on the sp3 carbon. Tertiary haloalkanes follow the SN1 pathway. Methyl groups and primary haloalkanes follow the SN2 pathway, not the SN1 pathway. Secondary haloalkanes can go by either pathway depending upon conditions. Now let's find out what makes for a good leaving group X in substitution reactions. The most important determinant is the basicity of that leaving group. The weaker the base, the better the leaving group. If we were to look at leaving groups based on halides, from fluoride to iodide, based on the basicity, we would expect that the best leaving group is iodide because it's the weakest base. Fluoride is the strongest base of the halides, and so we would expect this to be the worst leaving group. If we look at a series of data for substitution at primary halides from iodide to fluoride, substituting with hydroxide, reactions that go as we've just learned by the SN2 process, we can see that the rate of the reaction for the fluoride is only one compared to 30,000 times faster for the iodide. And the trend is just as we predicted along the direction of decreasing basicity. This holds for both SN1 as well as SN2 pathways. And the reason is, is because the rate of a reaction is going to depend on the barrier that we have to cross over. What's the structure of the transition state, and how does it relate to basicity? 
Well, for both the SN1 as well as the SN2 pathway, the transition state involves a lot of negative charge developing on that leaving group. A leaving group's ability to stabilize negative charge is going to correlate with basicity. So let's examine the list of leaving groups that are possible for substitution at sp3 carbon atoms. We can look at a reactivity series and we find in fact that the alkyl iodides are the fastest. They're faster than alkyl bromides which are faster than alkyl chlorides and they're much faster than alkyl fluorides. What about other kinds of possible leaving groups with polarized bonds such as an alkyl group attached to an oxygen of say an ester or a hydroxyl group of an alcohol or an ether or an amine? Well, these are incapable of undergoing the reaction by SN1 or SN2 pathways. In the next webcast, we're going to look at the nucleophile and decide what makes for a good nucleophile, just as in this webcast we learned what makes for a good leaving group.